So Mass Mutual has just sent a memo to every single life insurance agent that does business with them, that is contracted with them, and they have said that they are no longer allowing people, agents, to represent Mass Mutual policies for the purposes of banking style policies. This includes becoming your own banker, infinite banking, bank on yourself, or anything to do with utilizing cash value as a banking style. Now. Um, I have a lot of opinions on this. I've got the memo behind me. I'm gonna share it, we're gonna go through it. I'm gonna share where I think Mass Mutual is absolutely on the money and right and, and kinda um, I'm in, a, in, in agreement with them on why they're maybe doing this. But I also think maybe they're being a little too over the top with it in some ways. Um, and ultimately, what I'm gonna do in this, I'm gonna go through this, I'm gonna give my opinion, I'm gonna talk about what this means for you if you're an agent and ultimately what it means for you if you're looking to get a policy uh, because Mass Mutual, their heck the policy is one of the most popular banking style policies that exists on the marketplace. This is gonna have a major impact in the industry. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell that way you're notified every time I launch a new video because I'm gonna be creating content like this all the time. So let's get into it, I'll see you in there. Hey, what's going on Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris, Life 180, and this video, we're gonna be going through the Mass Mutual memo that they sent out to all of their agents. Um, this is a big deal. This is gonna have a massive ripple effect on the industry. One of the, one of the things that I say all the time is that uh, when people ask, why do I work with the companies that we work with? Why um, do we try to suggest people to work with the companies that they work with? Is because Life doesn't exist on a spreadsheet. I could show you illustrations of Mass or Guardian or other companies. Um, at the end of the day, I wanna make sure that the people we work with, the companies we work with, are in alignment with our values and beliefs. They w I wanna work with companies that wanna do business the way that we do business. And ultimately, this memo is showing one of the reasons that, uh, that Mass Mutual is not in my favorite companies to work with category, um, because this is just them blatantly saying, uh, they want nothing to do with this business. And while I agree with some of the reasons that they're stating, and I'm gonna get into it, um, I'm gonna go through this memo line by line by line. And while I agree with this, I also, uh, there are some components in here that I got a little bit of an opinion on uh, that I'm gonna share, and uh, that's it. So without further ado, let me, let me just get into this. I'm gonna um, share the memo, and uh, we, will, we will go from, go from there. I'm gonna kind of pop myself up in the screen and uh, you can see the memo here. So, so you can see here uh, that, you know, this is going to all representatives, Mass Mutual uh, financial advisors. It's going their personal banking strategies to promote whole life insurance effective immediately. It's not replacing anything else and this is in effect indefinitely, right? So the summary, Mass Mutual does not support Mass Mutual does not support concepts that promote or position the purchase or sale of whole life insurance as personal banking or similar concepts focused on maximizing policy cash value and immediate and regular access through policy loans. So the funny thing, as I look at this statement, they summarize that they do not support concepts that promote position or purchase sale for banking purposes and promote immediate and or regular access through policy loans. The thing about this that kind of drives me crazy is if that's the case, if they don't want to promote it, they shouldn't create products that basically have made them a leader in the space for these strategies. So it's, it's kind of speaking out of both sides of their mouth. Um, now, overview. This is, so this is going to be kind of like their opinion uh, letter, I think, um, of, uh, I guess is how to put it, but using strategies uh, that position whole life insurance as a personal banking or similar concepts is inconsistent with Mass Mutual's policy because these strategies are often. So now it's gonna get into this. It's, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the title. Uh, they're often misleading to consumers. Uh, they often promote large deposits and then early immediate access through policy loans that are typical red flags for money laundering. All right, so a couple things here. Um, they are misleading a lot of times. I've been doing a lot of videos on this. Uh, a lot of times I've been, I, I, I do believe that um, the misrepresentation of how banking works and the responsibility and the risk if you don't manage your policy loans properly, especially when you take loans immediately early and you don't manage those loans properly. I've done a video, I'll actually put it on the end screen to, that talks about the truth about infinite banking, how it works, 
how positive arbitrage is not really a thing. It can be earned, but it's not really the foundational component about what it's, what it's uh, supposed to be used for. And so when you start looking at this and it's like, all right, um, yeah, it is misleading. And, and a lot of agents are not really uh, teaching people uh, the, the real foundational components about how to, how to do it properly. Um, so to promote large deposits and then early and immediate access, the, the funny thing is, contractually speaking, if you have the liquidity in the policy, Mass Mutual can't say no to the policy holder. You have that contractual right to be able to do so. The problem is the agents, they're basically saying, and I'm gonna get into it later, they're, they're basically saying they're gonna terminate you if this is the type of business that you're marketing, right? Um, this is, the, the fact that they say this is red flags for money laundering, um, like I get it when you take the AML training and you learn about money laundering and you, and you, you figure out ways that people can do it. This is a, an area where people could launder money, but to me, this is kind of like a scapegoat uh, comment or position because um, this is not what people are doing. Like think about when, if, if you want to do, if you had a bunch of credit card debt, you could go pay off that credit card debt uh, cash, or, or you could keep paying the 18%, or you could you know, refinance the debt, put a big deposit into a life insurance policy, borrow against it, pay off the debt, and now you're infinitely more efficient, right? Like if, if let's say a $20,000 loan immediately, uh, same thing with utilizing it for business loans, same thing for real estate, anything of that nature. Now, when you take a loan, once again, if you're, if you're borrowing against a policy early, you're gonna have to manage it. You're gonna have to manage that loan, be responsible, make good decisions, and understand um, how to do that. And they get into this a little bit. Um, now, here's the deal. They're used with younger customers who have less disposable income and or investment sophistication and often have, uh, have no dependence and hence no insurance need. Now, um, this is an interesting one to me. So yes, I think people are less sophisticated and I think this is an important component. Um, I think when you align with the mindset of you need to pay yourself first, um, and we need to save money. We need to have safe access to capital. I think having, take the infinite banking term out of it. Take the, the use of banking strategies out of the equation. I believe everybody needs a pile of safe money. That you need an, uh, a, an account value and, and access to safe capital. Um, there's no more safe capital from a long-term perspective that's gonna be protected against uh, inflation like a, a, a whole life insurance contract. It there's just doesn't exist. So for them to say um, that uh, there's no need for insurance, well, I don't know about you, but most people I know of are going to need uh, insurance in the best and the, and the, and the most uh, efficient time, cheapest time to buy insurance is when you're younger. And so who is the insurance company like to tell me if I'm 24 and I know eventually I want to have kids and I want to get married, if I can lock in my future goals at a younger age um, and get the other benefits and it kind of, once again, we talk about this, getting every dollar to perform more than one function, it's just planning. And so to say that younger people lack sophistication, which is true, uh, have no dependence, this just comes down to an education uh, element and once again, I think it comes back to the fact that they're saying um, that, uh, that people are mis being misled, right? And they don't understand. And so there's a lack of education, which is unfortunately true. Um, so it re results in policies having a higher lapse rate, right? Because uh, customers don't fully understand. So I get all this, right? I get, I get these three. Now, I want to take a step back and, and go, to this, go to this comment right here. So they're misleading the customers. They're in violation of insurance laws and regulations by positioning the policy as a checking savings or retirement vehicle and something other than life insurance. Um, and it violates illustration regulations by crediting personal financial plans, policy values without providing the supporting basic insurance illustration with the corresponding guaranteed values and required disclosures. So I'm gonna cover both of these, okay? So the violation of, um, of life insurance illustration regulations. This is a, oh my gosh, I can't even tell you. This is something that I see all the time. Agents are sending uh, the supplemental portions of illustrations and they're taking out the two to three pages of the supplemental portion of a, a 20 page to 30 page illustration 
and just utilizing that to sell without everything. Horrible. Like if, if you're looking to buy this or if you're doing this, that is a complete violation of compliance laws, right? Like it, you, you need to not do that. The same thing, they use those supplementals and then they maybe make uh, an Excel sheet that supports it. Once again, I, I don't have a big problem with the use of Excel sheets when, you know, when utilized to compare illustration to illustration. If you got like four or five, it's a way to consolidate and make it really easy to understand side by side. But the problem is if you get, a lot of people are utilizing those illustrations or those Excel sheets and they're not providing the full illustrations that correlate with all, let's say four examples, you'd need four uh, on the Excel sheet and you'd need the illustration accompanying each one, they'd have to be labeled properly. You know, you have to make sure that everything is dialed in. Unfortunately, there are too many shortcuts being taken and this comes back to the manipulation. It's misleading, like people are not being fully educated. They're being sold with half truths uh, about things and they don't have full clarity about what they're getting involved with. And um, this is one of the reasons uh, that, that, you know, that I create this content to try to try to help people just make better decisions. Now, they're misleading the customers in violation of insurance laws uh, by positioning the policy uh, as a checking or savings or retirement vehicle and something other than insurance. Now, uh, I wanna go here, um, and I, what I did was I, I went into the, some insurance law stuff. All right, so when we, when we look at um, what they're talking about as they're, as they're talking about uh, the fact that banking marketing and sales tactics are misleading, right? It, and they're against, uh, against the law effectively. I, it basically comes to this code when we, when we look at the code um, for insurance law, it's misrepresentations and false advertising of insurance policies. Um, so no person shall make, issue, circulate, or cause to be made, issued, or circulated, and an estimate, illustration, circular or statement, sales presentation, omission, or comparison that misrepresents the benefit, advantages, conditions, or terms of a policy. Um, okay, uh, misrepresents the dividends or share of the surplus to be received in a policy, makes a false or misleading statement as to the dividends or share of surplus previously paid in a policy is misleading or mis is a misrepresentation as to the financial condition of an insurer as to the legal reserve system upon which the life insurer operates. Uses a name or title of a policy that, uh, or class of policy misrepresenting the true nature thereof. I think this is the one, just the title infinite banking as a marketing term, I think uh, Mass Mutual is saying that is just a violation of law. Now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read these and I'm gonna kinda get into my opinion. Number six, is a misrepresentation including an intentional erroneous quotation of a premium rate for the purpose of inducing or tending to induce the purchase, lapse, forfeiture, exchange, conversion, or surrender of a policy. Number seven, is a misrepresentation for the purpose of affecting a pledge of or assignment of or affecting a loan against a policy. Number eight, misrepresents a policy as being shares of stock. Uh, by the way, this happens a lot with IUL, um, just like talking about being shares of, uh, of, of just an investment, like participating in actual investments. And it also um, can sometimes be misrepresented with mutual companies, right? Because we talk about you are effectively a shareholder, right? Like a lot of people utilize when you're a policyholder with a mutual company, it, you know, you participate in the profitability with the company. A lot of people um, misunderstand that and think like you're a stockholder with the company and that is not the case at all because it's not a stock company and, and it's important to understand the differences there. Um, and number nine, uses a name which deceptively infers or suggests that the insurer is not an insurer, i.e. infinite banking, right? So when you, when it, when it comes down to it, um, when it comes down to it, uh, these are the issues. So I think number nine is a big thing. Uh, Mass Mutual simply doesn't like private banking, infinite banking, becoming your own banker, bank on yourself, any of that stuff, right? Like they just don't like the names of that. So number three here is really interesting. It, it, and it's all about making false uh, or misleading statements as to the dividends of, of share of surplus uh, previously paid, right? So one of, the, one of the things that I think is really important to understand and I, I think is a... Uh, an area that is 
misrepresented a lot and I've done videos on this recently and I, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the video to this at the, on the end screen for you to see, but it's the truth about infinite banking is the name of the, the video and it's talking about how dividend, dividends work and how it's not about positive arbitrage and you know, a lot of people say, hey, you can buy depreciating assets like cars and you can make a lot of money on it. Uh, over the life of your thing. Well, I'll tell you that I do believe utilizing your whole life policy uh, as an asset in your life to increase the efficiency of everything you do because I just firmly believe that we need foundational assets that are guaranteed, that are liquid, that you have access and control of, right? Access to and control of. I think that's a the best uh, from a core structural perspective. People need to be able to have that safe money in their life. Now, when it comes down to all right, I'm gonna keep my money, uh, let's say I wanna save a year of income in safe money. Where am I gonna keep that money? I can keep it in a bank, I can keep it in CDs, I could keep it in uh, bonds, or I could keep it in whole life insurance, right? Like, and when you look at the actual performance and the benefits of whole life insurance, it dwarfs all those other assets. It just does. And so, like from that perspective, like I think it, it's looking at it is, is like, okay, what problems is this, product whole life insurance solving for me and how do I design it and structure it to do so um, the way that mass mutual is handling this is like I feel like they're throwing the baby out with the bathwater right like they're they're uh, they're not allowing people to do good business in a lot of ways um, and I think they're like probably because there's so many influencers out there right now that are just like I guess misrepresenting what this is right like and and how dividends work you don't have positive arbitrage. The dividend, if like Mass Mutual right now is paying, I think five and three quarters is a dividend uh, at the moment. You know, that's that's what's being uh, marketed. So basically, what they say, you know, and this is this is the challenge, right? And I'm going to go to the board here. Um, what they say is, um, you know, and this is this is just kind of where, where people are getting it wrong. Is they would say like, all right, so if uh, if Mass Mutual is paying five point seven five percent, right? And uh, that, is, that is what they're doing. And then you can go and uh, get a loan for 5%, right? Then you got 0.75% of positive arbitrage. That, that's what's being sold, right? So they're saying like you can, you can have this positive arbitrage, you can make money on buying all these depreciating assets. But the bottom line is this 5.75 is a gross number. That is not the number, think about gross income versus net income. You have your gross income, maybe you make 100,000 a year, but then you gotta pay taxes on that income, right? And so as you pay taxes, the gross number isn't what you take home, just like the gross dividend is not what you get paid in your policy. You're gonna, you can't look at the dividends, you actually have to run policies and think about what is the actual internal rate of return, what is the net dividend that you're effectively getting credited after all the cost of insurance, admin fees, all that different stuff. And ultimately what that winds up being is it winds up being less than uh, this loan rate. So you're not really making positive arbitrage on it long-term. Now, if you wait from a long-term perspective, if, I, if you were to buy a policy, let it sit, grow, use it as a savings account, 10 years down the road, start borrowing from it, can you earn positive arbitrage? If the environment is right with a non-direct recognition company, the answer is yes. But if you try to take a loan year one, assuming that this is gonna come into play, you're, you're going to be seriously disappointed. And then if you don't manage those policy loans properly, you're going to be in trouble, right? The policy can run into trouble. And that is why, honestly, I believe that they're, they're running into this, uh, this, this issue. Um, you know, uh, it, it, they're, it's just being misrepresented from that perspective. So what is the background here? Life insurance products have traditionally been offered, uh, been afforded favorable tax treatment for both the death benefit and cash value accumulation because of the valuable societal benefits life insurance comp life insurance provides. So this is saying they don't want to tax something because by you taking accountability and responsibility for getting life insurance to protect you and your family, um, it takes the burden off of the state and off of the government and puts it you know, you are taking that accountability, so why are they gonna tax you for it? That's, uh, so Mass Mutual has strongly objected and taken decisive action in circumstances where the benefits of life insurance are abused. 
Okay, specifically the company was strong industry advocate against stranger originated life insurance in the mid 2000s, that's Stoli. So this is basically saying like a lot of, there's been schemes out there and strategies that a lot of people have adopted that have come and gone and failed like stranger owned life insurance. Um, I'm gonna go back to this one, stranger owned life insurance. Um, let me go here, which is basically the, uh, intent of purchasing by newly created uh, investment pools. So you basically random people buy insurance on you and they pay you to be able to own the insurance on you. It's, it, it was a complete train wreck ultimately. Um, and so similarly, Mass Mutual is aware of numerous strategies that position life insurance as a type of personal banking arrangement. These strategies have many names, including be your own banker, infinite banking, your personal banker, bankonyourself.com, and many others. These designs typically disregard the protection elements of life insurance and focus solely on maximizing cash value and the early and often immediate access to cash values through policy loans. Once again, so I think this is important to say this section here, right? There's nothing wrong with, um, with leveraging these designs typically disregard. So I don't think you can ever disregard um, the life insurance component. I think anybody that just completely blatantly disregards them, um, you know, is, is not really looking uh, at the best interest of like the long-term objectives of the client. Um, but you, so you can't disregard the protection elements of life insurance. And if you focus on maximizing the cash value and then have immediate access to that cash value through policy loans, Listen, this, there's a reason the, the life insurance companies offer this benefit. You should have every contractual right. We as the agents, like um, you know, anybody who is licensed, you have the right, you should have the right if it's contractually allowed. And if a company like Mass Mutual is gonna create a product that enables it, they should allow you to be able to market it as such. If they don't wanna be able to do it, they shouldn't offer that benefit anymore. Um, and they should just get rid of the HECV product and any other design, they should just stop allowing it to be done that way. Um, now, I will say, once again, it comes back to the misleading components of it. And if you access the cash value through policy loans too early and you're not sophisticated enough and you don't understand what you're doing and you get over your head and you don't manage those loans properly, uh, then, then that's where you run into a problem. Now, personal banking concepts overly emphasize access to cash values. Once again, this is about financial efficiency. The real power of whole life insurance is you're getting $1 to perform multiple functions. It's a savings vehicle. It's, a, it's, it's helping you plan for retirement as an alternative, like let's just call it a volatility buffer. And it's, uh, it's providing the life insurance, right? Most people at some point in time in their life are gonna need all of those things, right? You need to save money, you need retirement income, and you're gonna need life insurance, or you're gonna at least want life insurance uh, one way, shape, or form. So um, anybody I feel like that's doing infinite banking that's not taking that into account, um, to me is missing the boat. Once again, I feel like Mass Mutual here is throwing the baby out with the bathwater, but th this, it's, 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 it's horrible. Like, I just don't understand. Mass Mutual participating uh, whole life insurance offers a combination of life insurance protection, cash value accumulation and guarantees and income tax advantages. Amazing, right? That's, that's what people are looking for. One important feature of whole life insurance is that the policy owner may access the policy's cash value through policy loans to help meet future major expenses or emergencies. Awesome. I.e. emergency fund, right? Like when we talk about saving an emergency fund or a rainy day fund, um, this, I'm a huge advocate for that, right? So they say it right there. Um, anyway, um, personal banking and similar concepts are inconsistent with mass mutual company policy. However, because they focus primarily on accessing cash value above all else, often minimizing or disregarding whether the client needs or can afford the insurance. Okay, here's the deal. A lot of times people are like putting in 40% of their income into a policy, which to me, that's on mass mutual, uh, you know, to, to make sure that they're doing the financial analysis to make sure that people are not putting too high of a percentage of your income into this. I do agree that nobody should be utilizing an infinite banking policy as a pure bank. I am not a believer, just so you know, I'm not a believer in utilizing a whole life insurance policy 
and then funding all your expenses, borrowing against the policy, paying your expenses, paying back the policy loan every day, every month, because that, in order for that to work, for that to work on an assumed basis every single month, you would have to have positive arbitrage. Meaning if I paid uh, $5,000 of my monthly expenses from my policy loan, I took a policy loan and it was costing me 5%. Well, if I were earning the five and a, uh, three quarter percent as I showed at the beginning, well, and I'm earning that positive arbitrage, then it makes sense. But the bottom line is that's not what's happening. And I feel like because there's some bad apples out there that are misrepresenting how this works, everybody's getting punished. Um, and I understand Mass Mutual has to protect themselves from a liability perspective and they want good business on the books and all that stuff, but um, to, to just not allow people to do it is, is kind of mind numbing to me um, it, for banking at all. So instead, cases are designed to generate significant amount of cash value in the policy, particularly in the early years, which once again, what's wrong with that? It's just efficiency, getting your dollars to perform more than one function. Uh, with the clients often accessing the policy's cash value almost immediately after issue. Once again, if you're sophisticated enough and can manage it, how, who is Mass Mutual to tell you whether or not you should or shouldn't be able to do that? Such as to meet the client's daily expenses. Okay, so this part I agree with. You should not allow immediate access to meet daily expenses, right? Like, um, or even other investment purposes. Well, for that part, uh, I disagree with wholeheartedly. Um, that's where I start to draw issue with, with their problem here. Essentially liken the policy to client's own personal bank. Uh, once again, it's just leverage. Um, doing it the right way, if you manage it, once you do have to be more sophisticated when you're doing that. You have to understand how to manage your own cash flow and what you're going into, but uh, it, it is what it is. Personal banking strategies are high risk, they're saying. Our experience has shown that the personal banking uh, concepts violate state law, state insurance laws. That's what I was talking about. I showed you the insurance laws on, on that page, just going through. That's what they were relating to. Unfair trade practices, uh, this is what I just talked about. Position insurance as a check in a retirement vehicle. Um, I got news for you. They do their own marketing, talking about utilizing uh, cash from your policy as a supplemental retirement income. So I don't understand how they're now saying um, I don't think it comes down to this. Like the, the challenge with this memo that I have is that they're, they're, they're bringing a lot of issues into this memo that are not really related to the problem that they have in general, right? Like that's, that's a problem. Like you, you can't speak out of both sides of your mouth, Mass. Like you can't say, hey, your position insurance is a savings checking or retirement vehicle. Well, you yourself make compliance approved retirement vehicle uh, statements about the power that whole life can have in your retirement as as uh, an asset that can help all your other assets. Um, now, some people, I guess, take it too far, like anything else. And if you're utilizing this as a as a checking account, that's a problem. But it's certainly a great savings account. You just got done above saying it was a great emergency access vehicle, right? Like so. Um, to me, that's what a savings account is for, is for emergency, liquid accessible capital for emergency. And you know, you're know you gonna lose money to inflation long-term in a bank account, but a whole life policy is gonna basically match or beat inflation. That's what life insurance companies do. They they maintain the purchasing power, right? So um, non-compliant illustrations, You know, it's getting a little redundant. They covered a lot, little bit of this and they're just going into detail. This is what I, I got into that a little bit. The money laundering conversation, once again, I think this is uh, way overplayed. I think they're being, uh, is this an issue? Could it be a potential risk? I mean, a little bit, I suppose, but this is where you, uh, you have to trust your agents and you have to trust the field and the field underwriters that are working with you and going out there and having the conversations with the clients and doing good business. The risk goes uh, on the agents at that point in time too, right? So you gotta look at that. No insurance need, I always kind of state, uh, life insurance is not a need-based product, it's a want-based product. Um, who is, who is uh, Mass Mutual to tell me what I need or don't need for insurance based on what I want the impact of my life to be in this world, right? Like, I mean, I have a wife and three kids, um, but when I was 25, I, I was not married yet, I didn't have any kids, but I knew 
that having a wife and three kids was in my future. That's what I wanted to have. So even though I had no insurance need at that point in time, if I could lock in my insurability on a guaranteed basis for the rest of my life and be a proactive planner, who are they to tell me that I can't do that? Like it, it just, it makes no sense. They have all these things in place. Now, I think what they're doing is they're, they're lumping this and saying, okay, there's no need. And they're positioning it uh, saying that, you know, uh, I guess this here and that um, they're trying to utilize it. And, you know, uh, where is the part here? Uh, they disregard the protection elements. So when there's no need and they're disregarding the protection elements and it's not really coming into a planning conversation, I get, I get where that comes in, but uh, it just seems really extreme to me, you know, the, the line that they're taking with this, right? Like, um, let's go here. Customers may not have the investment experience or sophistication to understand the nuances of using whole life as part of their overall investment program. This part, I got to tell you, I agree with this wholeheartedly. Um, most clients don't. We run into a lot of people. This isn't just about when people go, Chris, why should we work with Life 180 or any agents that you work with and coach uh, over somebody else? It's because it's not just about designing a policy right. It's not just about making sure the base PUA blends and all the riders are set up properly. It's about understanding how this is going to work in your life, understanding and having a coach that can help guide you on leveraging and managing your policy loans, finding the right opportunities when you use it and, and, and doing it in the right way and having that support from a long-term perspective. Um, being younger, they're saying the banking policy people are typically younger, um, which by the way, is not really my experience. And I guess maybe they're running into stuff that I don't really run into. They're having a situation where they have a lot of younger clients that are coming in that doesn't tend to be the demographic. Uh, I guess there are some younger people that we've worked with, but those people typically have families or have businesses and have an insurable need or, or desire. Um, but if they're younger, I don't, I don't know. That, that, that to me is a very vague statement, that younger word there. What does younger mean? 35, 25? What, I, you know, they may not have dependents. Well, that's, they're saying, and will suffer a loss in the event of their death. Uh, that, and so they're basically saying, if you don't have dependents, you don't like need life insurance. It may not be the appropriate product. Once again, that takes the planning conversation out of the equation altogether. They're, assu they're assuming that you talking about this in this way, selling life insurance that doesn't have somebody with dependents, you're not capable of having that conversation to really help people plan, which to me uh, is just A, short-sighted on their part and is, is handcuffing you and uh, it's not good. So lapse risk. Customers who borrow against their policies must understand that if loans are not repaid, if loans are not repaid, Interest will accrue and over time reduce the available cash value and death benefit payout. And should dividends go down or interest rates rise, an increase, uh, there is an increase of risk of the policy lapsing due to an overloan. So there's a couple things here. Um, first off, overloan. There's a couple companies that offer overloan protection riders to eliminate that risk if that does happen. So uh, Mass Mutual is not one of them. Uh, so I would say take a look at that if that's important to you, if that's a risk that you want to mitigate. Um, but they're right, and I've been talking about this a lot. Dividends go, if dividends go down, which I believe dividends are going to go up, I think we've seen them go down. And maybe Mass Mutual over the last decade has run into problems because illustration, per, actual performance of the policy has, has underperformed illustrator rates. People have borrowed against it. Dividend rates have come down, borrowing costs have gone up recently, and that may be causing some issues and it's causing fear for mass. I understand how that could be happening right now, um, but this comes down to understanding what you're getting involved with and understanding that there are risks and that you have to manage your loans and that you have to pay them back. It's all about cash flow and it's all about understanding when um, the policy is efficient, when the loans make sense, when they don't, um, and how to manage them. That comes back to the sophistication conversation that they're having, the lack of sophistication for these investors. And um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, oh, gosh, this is just nuts to me. Um, the right to act if identified. So this is an interesting part. This is where I want all you Mass Mutual people uh, to, to pay attention. Um, anybody who's contracted with the Mass Mutual. Mass Mutual believes that marketing or promoting whole life insurance based on personal banking strategy is not in a customer's best interest. This, I could not more disagree with this. Once again, I can agree with the fact that a lot of people are doing it improperly, uh, but I think 
the general rule of thumb is there's no problem with it uh, if you do it the right way. Um, if you're doing it in a lot of the ways that they're explaining, then yeah, I get where they're coming from. The company reserves the right to take any appropriate action if such a strategy is identified, including the following. They have <laughs> disapprove any public, public communications, marketing materials, websites promoting the concept. So basically, if you are marketing online, anything to do with any kind of banking videos, materials, policies, you're making Excel, illustrate, uh, Excel sheets and that are not uh, compliance approved, any kind of marketing materials, make no mistake about it. If you have a website, if you have a book, if you're promoting anything, they will, they're saying they disapprove this. They disapprove you vehemently right now. Uh, you are not allowed to do it. That they request that producers, including unaffiliated brokers, meaning they have uh, basically a career channel and a broker channel uh, for you to be independent, refrain from using Mass Mutual's products, name, or logo in connection with such a concept or strategy. Uh, you might want to eliminate the Heck V from your marketing plans. I just did a video a couple days ago on the Heck V policy um, and a breakdown on it and, and how flexible it is. The only reason you would ever want that flexibility is for utilizing it for the reasons that they're saying they're, you're not allowed to do it, right? So important to understand that's going to uh, throw a huge wrench in a lot of people's plans uh, and take any, they, they have the right to take any necessary action to prevent future marketing of mass mutuals products with such a concept up to and including terminating a producer's contract and or appointment with mass mutual. They reject any application determined to be inappropriate, unsuitable, or not in a customer's best interest because the sale is based on such concept or strategy. So basically this is saying, any of you infinite banking folks out there who have uh, said to yourself that you wanna run infinite banking business and you are really drawn to the mass mutual um, products, this is a problem. So you're just not gonna do it. You're gonna have to find another home. Uh, you gotta do something else. And this is one of the reasons why uh, the majority of the business that the agents that I coach write it doesn't go through mass. Um, and I've known this is where this was going for a long time, several months. I've had some conversations with people. Um, I'm shocked that they actually went this extreme. I understand some of the fundamental reasons why they had to go this extreme. I think they're totally overstepping. I think they're totally like uh, being a little too scared about this. They're like burning the agents at the stake over uh, a lot of people that are doing it the right way. I think this, honestly, they should take it on a case-by-case -case basis of people that are actually marketing it improperly, positioning it improperly, um, and not really educating people and take it, look at, they have a compliance division for a reason. Um, making these broad stroke um, rules and regulations from a compliance perspective and setting a company policy, I guess it's their right to do whatever they want, um, but you know they have become, uh, a, a, a pillar in the infinite banking space because of the products that they offer, uh, especially the heck fee product, right? Like a lot of infinite banking people really, really lean on that product. And uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's one of the reasons that we don't do much business with them. Um, and it's like, I always kind of tell people, you wanna make sure that you work with companies that are in alignment with your values and beliefs and that do business the way that you wanna do business. And I feel like a lot of people sell this and they've been representing Mass Mutual, knowing that Mass Mutual doesn't like that kind of business. And I think Mass Mutual just got kind of tired of it. And I can tell you, I'm grateful that we haven't written a lot of Mass Mutual business to this point in time for the reason that this uh, has come out, you know, and that, that just is what it is. So um, anyway, any questions about this, any comments? I'd love to get your feedback. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on, on this memo. How is it gonna impact you and your business? Um, because, uh, and if you're a policyholder, what are your, in, with, of these policies with mass, or if you're thinking about doing it, what's going on in your mind? If you have any questions, you want to reach out to somebody, you want to get clarity on anything, you can go down and link in the description below, set up a clarity call with one of the people on our team. And, uh, that's it until next video. Hopefully you found this valuable. Have a blessed inspirational day. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. That way you're notified every time I launch a new video. All right, take care.